Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is April 10th, 2022. Howard, what's going on? You, I see you have a red background. Oh, that's a piece of art. Is mm -hmm. this your like portfolio map for the year? Or this is this more? this piece of art is one of the first one I ever bought. I think we only maybe paid it. Not that I'm proud of it's art, so you don't know, but we were probably just married in Amsterdam. Maybe we paid a thousand dollars. She's a very incredible. How much do you think it's worth today? Well, I'm not selling it. I don't know how this stuff works. If it was an NFT, I'd be retired. This is called um, 19, uh, Love Letters. That's what that's called. But it looks so like there's murder in the love letter with all that black. Yeah. So if someone one, offers you, let's say, what, 99,000, would you sell it? Never. You wouldn't? Yeah, everything here. My son price. would. That's why I have it. My son would <laughs> should hit the bed on, the on this lifestyle for another. <laughs> Max yeah. has a girlfriend. Life is good. She's cute too. Good job. Good job. Things are, things are happening. Awesome. The kids are adulting. Mitch was in New York and Max has a girlfriend in Vegas. And she doesn't work at uh, IHOP like Tiger. Like Tiger. <laughs> Well, that, that's good news, Howard. Are we? What do we do on the show? Do we talk about the markets? We talk about uh, cycling, golf, and and the market, right? I tell you what, I am in as good a shape as I could. If I just watch what I ate a little more, I just was about as. I was riding with guys in their sixties who were fuck, and I consider myself I've been in pretty good shape. They were kicking my ass. Wait, aren't you in your sixties yet? No, I'm in my no? late fifties. I'm in my mid to late fifties. Good, you're still young. All right, and, let, let's uh, talk about the, the market power. So, so what do you see here? Tell me what you see, because I'm miserable. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what I see. So for the better part of the first quarter, the market was worrying about high inflation. And that's why we saw all the agricultural stocks, oil, gas. Can people see the video or are they seeing us? Can people see the screen? Yes, people are seeing both. The charts and us at the same time. Oh my this is moo. Yeah, this is agriculture. That's so an, anything related to rising inflation expectations uh, substantially outperform in Q1. Basically, everything went up 30 to 50 percent or more. And then mm -hmm. in the past couple of weeks, I'm starting to see a new theme, which is the market starting to price in potential recession later oh, in the later in the year because all of a sudden we're we're seeing defensive sector like healthcare utilities and consumer staples and reads just breaking out to new 52 week highs so i mean you really don't want to see those so staples. stuff with higher interest rates ivan or what are you saying uh stuff that is that does well during recession so yeah. basically the market yeah. is currently thinking that there will be stagflation which means high inflation low growth yeah, or negative growth, and all of those sectors definitely saw substantial inflows in the past couple of weeks. So many breakouts in the sectors, like so many, like all the discount stores, out auto stores, which you know they tend to do well during recessions, you know, because people don't buy new cars. Oh, AutoZone. Wow. They just fix what they have. So um, all the discount stores, you know, I mean, not Target, but I guess Costco and um, what was the other one? B bj and uh, walmart definitely dollar, what about dollar general them as well definitely breaking out so that whole topic about you know the market worrying about a recession is definitely playing out right now uh, along with alongside inflation so the only thing basically that is not rising is tech you know the, the big well, growth like growth, anything yeah. growth is being punished by the way these multiples are crazy so of course yeah, so tech's definitely kind of looking uh, vulnerable. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of, yeah, it tested its 200 day. Now it's back to its 200 day. I'm kind of thinking if it cannot bounce here, it can, you know, start falling down. Maybe, maybe retest uh, 333 here. Maybe retest. I mean, there's a lot of downside out there. So, there's uh, still, everybody's overexposed, including yours truly, even though I have high cash, to, to tech. Like, I can't, I'm not. I, you know, I'm fully believing that people should asset allocate, but I'm not going to go learn how to pick agriculture uh, stocks. This is, this is the, you know, this type of rotation is why people should have asset allocation and not think that they're smart, um, you know, because 
this could just be getting started. We talked about semiconductors two weeks ago, Ivan. I said they're starting to roll over just like the trannies. Yeah, so yeah. And no offense to any tranny listeners, but just like the trannies. Oh, you get that joke, Ivan? You actually got that joke? I got it. I got it. We could get canceled over that joke. So uh, (laughs) it's possible, uh, but no one is watching Howard. There are like a thousand people watching, so no one's going to find it out. And uh, definitely one of the, oh, every, anything cyclical has been super um, weak. Um, yeah, look, look at UPS. Look, I think that's a train wreck too. Yeah. And that I mean, was obvious, just breaking yeah. out. That's not a train wreck. I mean, big deal. Okay. But definitely okay. showing relative weakness. What about the railroad? Like, because they were at all time highs. Are they but rolling? They also rollers? reversed as part of this, that sector. So maybe that, that pullback to the 200 day, if, everything they say which is funny like all these people like chasing agriculture stocks up 200 percent uh they don't think you know these 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 are different types of breakouts that doesn't mean it won't continue to work but these are these are cyclical businesses and they're really driven by like fear and inflation right now and i don't know it's hard for me yeah god bless some of these some of these wins ivan are fantastic yeah absolutely i mean that definitely fertilizer has been so strong for um anything basic materials, anything food related. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you, even a stock like, like Colm, like, like they sell X that h- hasn't gone nowhere I mean, for, forever, even they're breaking out, you know, anything. Yeah, there should be real breakouts, but again, I just, what do I know about these? But I don't understand and the government. It's so funny because the government hates oil companies, but these food companies are killing us. So, yeah, so in your in your venture it. capital, you've only invested in in a tequila company. So, like, nothing food related or anything <laughs> consumer. No, I mean, yeah. listen, I I truly, you know, you got to pick your domain experience, and I think this is this is people should be thrilled that we're seeing this rotation. It was a joke, right? Like, it'd be better. Like, people go, oh, "Are you worried about growth?" Like, I'd be worried if everything was selling off, right? Like, oh wait. Oh wait, everything was selling out. Do people like is that what people want? No, this is just real rotation caused by real infl- real business shit happening and real tragedy happening in the economy and in, internationally. And there's real consequences of of this complete wealth trade and wealth gap that happened, right? You got yeah. Bezos owns the Washington Post, Elon Musk owns Twitter. Uh, Mark Benioff owns Time Magazine. Jared Kushner just got two billion from the Saudis, even though he's never managed money in his life. Like we are living in the most ridiculous era of money and and greed and wealth accumulation, but the markets are doing their thing, right? Like you, you, you know, the money is seeking a home. I think what people are rooting for is some kind of crash which is crazy so i'm kind of happy that we're not seeing a complete meltdown um because i want people to be able to make money what i'm advising people and i know you trade for yourself i don't really do that is you know you 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 know for you it's risk management so a ticker is a ticker and you understand this rotation but for the average person who doesn't have the time like this growth trade has been warned and over for a long time and until you get inflation under, you know, some kind of policy that that makes sense, look at the look at the rates. Like, yeah. there's a lot more damage to come. Like, what I'm worried about is another 08 problem caused by housing and cars and lending and and greed and and fear. Like, that's what I don't want. Right now, we're just seeing, you know, a little bit of of give back and tech stocks right like what if it really gets yeah. bad i mean it's possible to happen as you if you remember the first half of 2008 uh yep. like oil and potash stocks were leading uh they went up a lot i mean look at this here exactly this is, so the first this half is of not good like people need to remember kind of doubled and, yeah. and after that everything broke <laughs> correct this is real and this is not what you want to see is I know that people hate their tech overlords, but you in their oil, these oil overlords and these food overlords, um, combined with just the Me Tooism in public in, in, in of politics, we are like really sloppily setting up for a, a late year crash, right? Like, 
because I mean, if oil prices and food prices continue higher, that is very likely. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. that's what I'm nervous about. And that's what I'm trying not to chase, you know, cyclical uh, stocks. But this, nothing good happens when utilities are. are exactly. Are, I mean, you don't, you don't want to see them uh, leading yeah, the market. It's fine them. when they're, you know, they're never doing badly, but, I, you know, I just, I just don't like seeing Because it. it's funny that, you know, you typically. But what a run from the 08 from the from no but what a run from the, the they've doubled off 2020 prices so i guess you i mean don't chase utilities but i guess the next time you see a crash it's okay to own some utilities um it's funny that in a you know record inflation environment you have utilities that pay three four percent dividend and people are still putting money there just because the thinking is you know okay during high inflation we're going to lose purchasing power, but at least it's not going to be a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I don't understand a lot of the behavior. I just think it's okay to say you don't know what's going on. It's okay to like trade some breakouts, like you're like you're recommending. Like I totally see these breakouts, and but these things can reverse very quickly. And and you, I don't care how much people hate tech when growth isn't working. Um, investing in value businesses is is you know why you index you know like that's why you you go in the stock market for these type of periods where uh stock picking isn't working and you want to stay invested but stock picking in this environment i'm wary of people picking stocks here because you haven't seen this happen this type of these companies are are not known by these young people and they don't they haven't seen anything like this well we haven't seen inflation what since the 70s and the government it's got one trick to combat it and it's a much trickier type of world than it was in the 70s um so i'm in like real conservative mode i don't like what i'm seeing and the same people are still being preyed upon look at look at her like people are so quick to call a bottom there and you know, this, she doesn't know what she's doing. She hasn't seen this environment and managed billions of dollars. Like she has one trick in at ARC. I and read trick, somewhere on Twitter. The trick is broken. It. Yeah. That this year, no matter how ARC does, they're going to make 80 million, something like this. Yeah, because she's got yeah. fans. It's like Trump. Look, she's got disciples. It's like a cult, like, because they don't want to change their mind so they dig in right or they they rationalize like being down 60 percent um and there's no reason it's okay everybody's gonna have stocks that go down 50 percent. period end of story if someone uh, it's happened to all of us it's happened to me um and you have to know the risk trade-offs because you know but to have your whole portfolio you know go down and then just you know she's still talking about oil like it's going to be 12 bucks 10 bucks yeah. Uh, yeah yeah pretty ridiculous and um i mean some growth managers are actually using arc as a hedge so they own some 10 20 individual stocks and then they short arc Absolutely. as a hedge because the s&p hasn't been a good hedge for the for the growth names so no, this is hasn't. one one of the the reasons why it's still so popular uh, possibly as a vehicle. But is there any is there any i mean listen growth in crypto is still working because the market caps are small and the insider you know knowledge you know the kind of the the magnifying do you have a favorite uh token right now or a cryptocurrency um Lu terra Lu luna has been breaking up but i don't get it it's a stable coin kind of thing mm -hmm. stable coins come and go in my opinion um uh but I, I i do think bitcoin is in the long term doing what it's supposed to do bitcoin is kind of digital gold it's performed way better than gold look at look at gold like it should be triple from here no one really i mean you know it's the best setup that i see that hasn't yeah. actually done anything so it's just it's just, yeah. it's so for the next year, if you had to choose between gold and Bitcoin, which one? You know, I would always choose the digital version of it because I trust the supply 
versus like gold i don't trust because the governments are involved right like it should be going much higher but like bitcoin kind of there was a great peter thiel interview that i linked to today where he was saying bitcoin predicted the inflation right like the mm -hmm. rise of bitcoin predicted this right versus everybody wants Bitcoin to go up now because of inflation. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not a Peter Thiel fan and I think he form fits all a lot of his stuff. He's a great venture investor. I don't think he was a great public market investor. So I, I don't trust his analysis, but his, he's gotten enough right about money and stuff that you got to listen to him. And, you know, if you look at a Bitcoin chart, I guess you don't go back long enough in your Bitcoin chart, but like Bitcoin predicted in 2011, 12, 13, that we would get inflation. Let's go take a look. Go back and look at just one second. And it is an interesting. Uh, there you go. Like Bitcoin that run in 21 was the predictor of inflation or 20. You know I mean, what I mean? Everything went up because of, you know, I mean, the U.S. basically- Not at that scale. Five and trillion not, dollars, cowards. So I understand that Bitcoin was a great proxy yeah. for the inflation that was at hand. And I was like, it's digesting one of the most incredible runs of all time as an asset. So I'm like, if you ask me what I would pick, if I was betting against policy, uh, betting against American government getting it right, which I doubt they will based on how split the government is and how old our leaders are, how mean they all are. Bitcoin is way better hedged than gold because I trust the supply. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I'm not saying go out and buy it. I own some, but like, you know, I don't fully understand how tied to the system it is. But like, if we go look at rates, and inflation if you think about what the government keeps kicking the the you did you have school debt ivan no i haven't okay. yeah, you never just, had it you just paid cash I, I paid it yeah okay but the students have not been paying student debt for two years you talk about inflation you've now programmed uh kids in their mid-20s that they don't have to pay their school debt for getting right or wrong uh i am pissed because I paid my debt and, you know, I got to pay my kids school. So why am I now picking up Harvard? You know, why am I picking up Harvard and Yale and all these, this, this debt uh, from kids that are going into the system? Obviously there's good kids that deserve some relief, but I'm not happy about this. And this is inflationary. Like what, these kids are never going to pay back the trillions in debt that they, that they have. And that doesn't make the, what, this, so the whole thing's so corrupt. And we're at some, I don't know what the trigger is, but no one's talking about the student debt. Everybody, both sides are kicking the can down the road and, and we're not allowing people to pay back their debt. Is, is it that big of a market? You, you mentioned trillions. Debt? Are you kidding? It's like Fannie Mae. You know how many, how many universities? This whole fucking country is run by universities and the debt and scams. That the, I'll, the, I'll check on it later after the show. Yeah. But my point is, if you tell a 23 year old that they you've deferred their payments for two years and they can go, gamble on crypto and and, uh, and and parlay bets on DraftKings and FanDuel and MGM and free bets. Good luck trying to get these kids to pay that debt back later on. That's inflationary. Like it's not good inflation either. These kids are just gambling and they're not spending it other than on iPhones. So it's not going in a, in a, in a in, so we're just, you know, hate to be that old guy that says that, but uh, these are not this is why Apple and Google are working. That's what kids spend their money on, you know? So anyways, the, so if, if I think, people, to, I think if, if you can trade the cyclical, Ivan, there's so much working, like you said, agriculture, um, anything say, oil reads, and gas, yeah, energy, up, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Chevron was breaking out. I saw God Patterson. I used to trade that in the nineties. Yeah. It's, uh, you know Setting what I mean? Up like, again, wow. it's crazy, yeah. But yeah, all the oil lamps are just looking really bullish, obviously, you know, just starting to break out again after a big move in uh, early Q1. And they're under own and there is no supply. So these things could so, definitely them, become yeah. meme stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, beautiful charts. So so again, like I th I, what I worry about is what, when we come back and do these at the end of the year, what, you know, if anything that we're thinking about today, what I'm worried about is more third quarter, fourth quarter, when people really 
who've overstayed their welcome and growth panic. And what happens? Do they put their money into agriculture stocks or do they pull it out of the market completely? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I'm trying to think through. Yeah, but the anyways. New, the new earnings season, I think, starts next week. So it'll be interesting to see how all those companies will talk about supply and, uh, supply uh, management issues. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. This will be a really wild earnings season for sure. Anyways, you're doing well? Yeah, I'm doing well. Do I sound like the cranky old man? No. I think you sound reasonable, Howard. Yeah, it I makes think sense. We've, been, we've been carefully sounding the alarm on the weak action in tech. I wish I had better news for people. I mean, business is good. Like we have companies that are growing in, in our portfolio, but they're, the amount of capital they have in the, in the valuations that they're at are, in my opinion, silly. And I've been writing about that. So well, you're not going to... Fun- what's going on with your SPAC? Are you doing anything or... I, I wish I could talk about it, but you know I can't. Okay, cool. The uh, so have a great week, buddy. In May one, I'll be in San Diego. So I'm I'm in Spain uh, next week biking, but we'll try and do a show for. Oh, my awesome, program. awesome. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. See you have next a good week, week, everybody. Bye.